we invited an experienced solution architect to help us understand how AI assistants and agents are changing programming in 2025. What are the differences between tools like Copilot, Cursor, Windsurf and AI agents? Which tasks are they best for and how should developers prepare for the future? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Vlad Vorobyov. I'm a solution architect level 2 based out of sunny Malaga, Spain. And uh, I work as solution architect for a number of years already. However, my experience is mostly based in Java and cloud. Also, I'm uh, a co-head, co-founder of AI Garage department inside EPAM. Agents, Copilot, Windsurf, everyone talks about AI assistants. How do they actually differ and what types of tasks is each best suited for? I've tried uh, a number of those tools just by the nature of, of what I'm doing. And the view is that underneath the models are the same and the system prompts are not that much different. And what makes difference between them is the usability, is the user experience. The easier it is, the less pain, less clicks uh, it is, the better for speeding up basically your productivity. Here it's already not even that important if you're a junior developer, a senior developer, it will just speed up what you are doing. Of course, if you know how to use it. Uh, one example would be me with my pet project, which I'm doing by nights on Python as a Telegram bot. And I'm not super energetic and, and super fresh already, as you can tell uh, by nights, but uh, using those windsurf, for example, as an ID, I can in one command, git commit, make a meaningful message, not come up with it myself and push it or generate tests and run them and regenerate them until they make sense. And for me, it's only left to think about what I really want to do with my code and to check if what it generates like makes any sense. Because without understanding and seeing uh, what the code does and, and how it's written, you still will not get far. What is AI agent for programming? To understand this, I would say that first we need to understand what is agent overall. Agent is a way to structure and empower LLM to focus it and in place of playing the general role of know everything, answer to anything, very heavily prompt dependent, to focus it to play the specific role and specific function and also to empower it with tools and memory and the way to communicate to the outer world. Of course, if we are talking about agents, usually we are talking about multi-agent system where uh, several agents are communicating between each other to achieve common goal. What it turns out, how it plays for developer, it means that you can replace or empower yourself and or replace, replace uh, of course, in, in, in caveats, uh, not literally, some of your colleagues with the agents that will play their roles. So you can assign an agent that will be a BA agent and will be helping you to clarify your user's stories and write down them as Jira tickets because if it's an agent, we talk about that it has communication ways to outer world, it has tools, so it can communicate to Jira, for example, and create a Jira ticket for you. Or if it's a developer agent, it will write code for you. Or if it's code reviewer agent, it will review and, and give you some comments and go on, go on. And then you can start building workflows out of those agents to cover the full life cycle. But still, I think the main idea here is that uh, the human is still on the steering wheel. And, and drive and seat. So you can still, you should still control what your agents are doing, even if they are more or less autonomous. What is the difference between AI agents and large language models? Basically, agents is a way to structure and empower large language models. The model is basically a black box, which has inputs and outputs. As an input, it has text or images, and as an output, the same. 
text or images. An agent is already a way to communicate with this LLM, which is under the hood, and the way to let this LLM do some actual work so it can execute actions. I would say that it's even architecture pattern already for LLMs, where LLM is a building block. What are some real-world examples of using AI agents in development? Now, current moment for agents, I would say, is boosting your productivity. You don't need anymore to go to Stack Overflow. You don't need to Google things. You still would want probably to read documentation, but even that can be achieved better when the agent just brings you relevant pieces of, of that documentation. The agent that is empowered, of course, with searching that documentation and fetching it. And what is, let's say, the future and not now is the fully autonomous systems. I know that there are already experiments and ways where like the systems even that can build end-to-end -end code, deploy it, and it will work because it will, again, with the help of multi-agent approach will test it itself and then generate deployment descriptors and everything and it will work but it will not be supportable for now make a supportable a maintainable code i would say especially when we are talking about really complex uh, solutions and scenarios not something that can be des described in one or two sentences that's not yet the current state i would say IDEs like Windsurf or Cursor are often described as the next step after GitHub Copilot. What fundamental advantages do they offer developers? It's all about usability, I would say. The first step is just generating the code in ChatGPT or whatever LLM is there with prompting, with injecting manually your context. Next, you can improve this by automatically inj injecting context. By context, I mean, of course, your code that is already existing. With fully-fledged AI IDs, they are taking a step further where they can execute actions on your behalf. So they not only they create files and modify files in your code base, but they can run terminal commands to commit things, to test things, to do whatever, to deploy if you wish to do all the tasks, the full cycle. Where is the line between convenience from AI assistance and the risk of losing control over the quality of code and solutions? Increase code quality, it, it's a very good actually topic and question because indeed, usually the code generated by AI is either not very good of quality or most frequently not even quality. So it's very uneven. In, in this regards. What to do to increase it? Of course, first of all, you have to understand and control what is being generated. You can use partly manual input with the, not only generation from the chat, but inline generation, as was the first, in, uh, the first mode for GitHub Copilot, for example. Also, I think the nearest future of coding with LLMs and with agents is, is injecting the code quality standards and best practices as RAG architecture, as knowledge sources to your agents so they can consult with it and adhere to it. Maybe even implementing the separate agent that will also under the hood control it and change the proposed solution. What are prompting techniques and are they important for developers? Prompt techniques are essential skill, I would say, for everyone who works with LLMs, because the idea that I like to promote in, in basically all of my talks and all, all of the things I do is a bit counterintuitive for people. When we t start to talk to LLMs, we start treating it, them uh, unconsciously uh, as humans. And as humans, we start to attribute them with some characteristics, some features like we would do to humans because we start att attributing the person that we meet, every new person that we meet, like in the first three seconds that we see this person, just by how they look, how they talk, and, and all of this. And this is a big misconception for LLMs because the one model is not one person, it's million persons. It can give you significantly different results, absolutely controversial results, depending on how you ask it, depending on the prompt. 
And that's why understanding the prompt techniques and how the prompt works and how it influences the result is not is essential. It's part knowledge, part experience, I would say. And also, I would say that with agents that already have narrowed down the scope, uh, set up the role for, for the agent for LLM, it's a bit less important, but still it's something that you have to be aware of. For the examples, I think very well known, everyone who passed at least one training on AI, Gen AI LLMs probably have seen this, that you have to set not only the context of your question, but you have to set the role for LLM. Also, what is important, you have to probably do examples and also in sometimes you have to ask LLM to break down uh, the task to several subtasks. So the reasoning and planning mechanisms, they are already embedded in some of the models, uh, but in many cases you still have to do this. What skills should programmers start developing today to remain competitive in the age of AI-driven software development? There are, from one side, a lot of skills and a lot of things to tackle. At the same time, not all of them are mandatory, I would say, for, for anyone. So it highly depends on the level of involvement and, and planet involvement in this. AI is kind of new cloud. So this is a set of skills where from one side, everyone should be aware of and have some experience and be fully aware of basics and then concepts to stay competitive. And from the other way, it can be scaled in, in depth and in width uh, nearly inf infinitely. From the most important, I would say that agents and understanding of how agents can be arranged and how they can communicate and how they can be focused and how the tools are working for agents is also among the essential skills. What should junior developers do in the age of AI? With juniors, it's, it's a very complex thing because indeed looks like that agents and LLMs are ready to replace juniors, at least juniors fully. But without juniors, there will be no middles and no seniors. So the answer I think is, is pretty obvious. Period of uh, learning and studying and, and getting experience will just be prolonged. The juniors will be just not right as right now getting salary for what they are doing but more like an investment from from company to grow the further generations how is the role of developer changing as more routine tasks shift to ai agents and copilots the role of developer is as previously i would say to think about how the tasks should be solved in a best way to control that it's done according to the plan, to question sometimes requirements, to be basically human, to talk to other people, to other humans. Finally, we all doing the software for humans. And that's the root of why we have also to put our human side on how exactly we do this. If you were starting a programming career today, what AI tools would you recommend a newcomer learn first? If I was to start right now, I would try to first get acknowledged and experienced with the tools, talking to LLMs, what uh, are the most popular to ChatGPT, to Gemini, and using AI enhanced search to, to learn. And also, of course, I would spend some time in learning Python. The biggest concern here would be from my side that I still have to teach myself, to enforce myself to, to learn, because it's easy to offload all the, the complex things to LLMs and say like, hey, do me uh, the code and test that it, it, it will work to not learn something, not try to build your mental models of, of some concepts and just say, I, I will read out during the interview answers to the questions from what LLM will give to me. And it's the biggest problem because without knowing and, and having the habit to think and to analyze as a human and just offloading all the work to LLMs, the quality will downgrade and, and degrade hugely and very fast. If we won't understand what we are doing, we won't be able to support it. 
as easy as that. So I wish to everyone who is watching me to learn new things, to never give up, to be optimistic about the technology, because any new technology is just a tool. It's not good, not bad. It just depends on how you use it. Learn how to use it. Don't be lazy to use your mind and to still teach yourself to analyze things. You still have to be in control. You still have to understand what actually is going on under the hood. This was Vlad Vorobyov. Please subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned.